Welcome back in. You're watching Talk Wisconsin. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. As mental health issues and family stability issues are on the line and on the rise, we're going to check in with an important topic for those of you who may be interested in learning more about child support and what that might look like. We've got, of course, the expert who's joining us once again. Ginger Murray is here with Your Family Law Center to help us tackle this topic. Ginger, thanks for joining us today. Glad to be back. So a big topic to discuss, and, and thankfully we've got somebody with plenty of experience to help us navigate this one. Let's first start with child support and how it's calculated. Sure, um, so the legislature created these uh, rules and guidelines, and so the first thing we do is take into consideration how many children are there that are being covered by this child support order. Um, for one child, it's 17%, for two, it's 25, for three, it's 29. And then we use that percentage and we multiply it by the earnings of each parent for each night that the parent has overnight. So for every night the children are with mom, we look at the percentage of income for dad. And then for the nights that they're with dad, we look at the percentage of income for mom. We compare those two numbers and whoever has to pay the most is the one who pays that child support obligation. Makes sense, so you've got a relatively simple formula in place. Let's talk a little bit about maybe earning income disparities though. What if the other parent isn't earning as much as he or she could or maybe should be? Uh, right, so that'll come up uh, more often than not, especially while the pandemic was in place. And so some folks didn't have the same sort of earnings, but that wasn't through any fault of their own. And in that case, the court's more lenient and likely to make a temporary adjustment until we can figure out what's going to happen long-term. But when someone intentionally chooses not to utilize their earning capacity, there's actually a term for that called shirking. And if the court determines that someone's purposely not making as much as they could, the court can impute what the court thinks is that person's earning capacity. So that the, in that equation, what the income is, is what the person could be earning, whether or not they're actually earning that. So the court has a way of dealing with folks who are purposely trying to dodge their child support obligations. Interesting, and of course can be a frustrating situation for the other parent involved. So it's nice to know that there is a way that that is handled regularly if that does occur. Another difficult situation, of course, can be if payments aren't being made, what happens then? Well, and it, what has to be considered is, is it an intentional and deliberate choice not to make the child support payments? Sometimes there is just a glitch in the system, the employer didn't send in the check, but if there's evidence that the child support payer is purposefully and deliberately not paying the court ordered payment, that's right then for a motion for contempt. And if successful on a motion for contempt, the court can actually order that person to be confined in jail and most definitely can order that person to have to pay the other person's attorney's fees that were incurred to bring the motion to the court. So there's some pretty heavy leverage um, when someone's purposefully not paying their child support. And you can see the need for an expert and to have a legal team on your side in these sticky situations when there is so much to consider. Another consideration that could be made, of course, is whether or not the child support amount can be changed. Could it be increased if they're earning more or decreased if there's a situation where they're earning less? Absolutely, and the, what the legal standard is, is has there been a substantial change in circumstances? Some pretty common changes in circumstances are one parent earns more or earns less. Another change could be that the placement schedule changed and so that number of overnights changed. And sometimes it's just the cost of raising a child. You know, sometimes those daycare expenses or converting from daycare expenses to maybe tuition costs for private schooling those added expenses can also be the basis for a motion to modify. And when these things come up, and even when the initial um, setting of a child support order is in place, if, if the rules were always straightforward, lawyers wouldn't be needed. And so I, I, I need to mention that for every rule, there's a million exceptions, and that's really where the lawyers come in handy. Absolutely, and an experienced lawyer and like yourself and your team where, they're, where you're going to have been up against a lot of these circumstances and know how to handle it to make it the best possible scenario 
for the, the individual that you're covering. I want to talk quickly before we head to break about what happens when your child is 18, either already or turns 18. Uh, that's an excellent question and not everyone pays attention to the boilerplate in their orders. But so a child turning 18 alone isn't enough for child support to stop. So if the child is 18 and has graduated high school, then eight, turning 18 is what stops the child support, the obligation. But otherwise, if the child is still enrolled in high school full time or its equivalent, the child support obligation continues until age 19 or graduation, whichever comes first. But even then, um, it's the parent's responsibility to make sure that the court and the child support agency know that those changes have happened so that the order stops. Otherwise, you can end up with some arrears if you just stop paying without getting the court's approval by way of an order. Okay, well again, there's a lot to know for our viewers out there watching. If you have more questions and would like to reach out to an expert, of course, Your Family Law Center you're seeing on your screen is offering a free consultation. So if you have questions, seek some help. The experts here can help you. Ginger, thanks so much again for your time. You bet. Have a great day.